Welcome back to the channel, my friends, Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at the new Tau Points leaks. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. All right, so spoiler alert. Obviously, the new Tau Codex is coming out really soon. So I think tomorrow morning, basically, we'll start seeing like all the official stuff on the Codex. All of the full rules will be reviewed by all the people who got like early access to it. But in the meantime, we've got a little bit of a spoiler as the points have officially leaked. I took a look through them. Give it a little rundown just to see kind of like what was missing as we know like some of the data sheets are definitely going to be gone because there's new data sheets and it's basically around the same amount and then i was also curious as to like what the actual points look like and everything and naturally whenever anything comes out new for warhammer the entire community just talks about how trash it is and how it's complete garbage without even being able to see the whole picture so that being said, ignore the negativity. We'll get to see the full picture over the next couple of days. But I figured in the meantime, let's take a look at the actual points. Let's take a look at any interesting like changes that we can notice or anything like that. Uh, so this is the actual like official points leak, at least what we're seeing so far. It does look legit to me. And then also we're going to compare it with the current points and everything like that. Now it is worth note that whenever these points come out, they're always almost immediately corrected afterwards when the real codex comes out. So for instance, the Dark Angels box came out a couple months ago. The actual codex just got released and we still haven't gotten like the amended points yet. So we're expecting that soon. So that being said, we know this goes up for pre-order this weekend. So two weeks from then, it'll actually be released. And then like a month or two from then, we'll actually get like the codex come out. And then after that, at some point in time, we'll see like amended points. So it's still going to be like a few months before the actual amended points come out and everything. This is just theoretically what's published in the actual codex. So take all of that with a grain of salt. But that being said, right off the bat, I just kind of like glance at the actual units and everything on here. And I'm sure I missed some stuff. But like Commander Farsight is on here. Commander Shadow Sun is on here. But I noticed that both of the owns, Own Va and Own Shi are gone. And then also Long Strike is gone. So that's like three unique characters that don't appear to be on this list. And if we just jump over here, we'll see on she on va and long strike. We're all on the Munitorum field manual points list. Uh, so there's no forge world stuff inside this book right here, of course. And then also like the detachment enhancements would be on a separate page. So none of those are listed on here, but then just glancing down everything else. And again, I took like a pretty quick look through it. It looks like all the rest of the stuff is here. Now I'm sure I missed something that's been removed or whatever. And then of course there's like additional units as well. Like we know that the crisis suits are now three different uh, data sheets. So that shows up as three different points cost right here. And then of course, also we have like the Kroot carnivores, the Kroot far stalker, like kill team kin band, Kroot hounds. And then instead of the shaper, we have the flesh shaper, the trail shaper and the war shaper. So now instead of one data sheet for the crisis suits, there's three. And instead of one for the shaper, there's three. And then of course we have the new Kroot Lone Spear, uh, the Kroot Rampagers, and then of course like the old Kroot Riders. So all the new Kroot stuff on here as well. Changes to the Crisis Battle Suits entries, and then it looks like some main characters are missing. Uh, so I don't know what that means. I don't know if they're gone altogether or what the deal is. That seems kind of strange that they would pull out some of those special characters, especially ones that have like models in the existing range, but we'll have to see how that pans out. Uh, right off the bat, I did notice, though, that the Vespids are still here, so that's really cool. I was really hoping they would get new plastic models, and obviously they didn't. So naturally, I was a little bit worried that they might be getting removed, uh, but glad to see that they did make the cut. Uh, so that being said, just kind of like perusing through this. And again, you have to do like some actual like point-to-point -point comparisons, which I'm not really going to do in this video. But like Breacher Team, 120. One broadside is 115 a piece, up to three in a unit. And then the Fireblade is 50 points. Commander Farsight, 140. The Cold Star Battlesuit 125, Enforcer Battlesuit 135, and then Shadow Sun 135. And now keep in mind also that previous editions, we didn't really have like the leader ability. So now like instead of operating independently, these commanders are going to be attached to units and buffing them. We don't know any of the new rules for any of them, but I'm assuming they're going to be very good and a lot easier for Games Workshop to balance because they're only going to be able to be attached to certain units. So really looking forward to how like those interactions take place. As what we've seen so far from like the Cold Star and the Enforcer Battlesuit look really cool. The Cold Star buffs the entire unit's movement and the Enforcer basically gives Armor of Contempt to the entire unit. So depending on what units they're able to go with, which of the Crisis teams they can go with, and then also obviously Commander Farsight and then Shadow Sun for stealth suits, we should have like some pretty cool interactions. Uh, so that being said, the Fire Knives are 165, the Star Scythes are 140, 
and then the Sunforge are 160. And those are all three man teams right there. So pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to how that pans out. It looks like a suit basically costs somewhere around like 50 points roughly. And then the way this is laid out, it looks like max suits are three per. So you could attach a commander to a suit team, but it's only going to be four models now. And then of course, like whatever drones and however they work, etc. Uh, but no more like big six man suit teams. So very interesting. Definitely looking forward to see how it plays out. Uh, we got Dark Strider at 70, Devilfish for 100, Ethereal 50, Farsight Team 70 points. So that's another one, the Firesight Teams. I wasn't sure if those Marksmen were going to survive as like they haven't got an upgraded kit yet. So they were kind of on lines with the Vespids, but it does look like they made the cut. Uh, and then we got Ghost Scale at 170. Definitely looking forward to how that plays out. The All Suit Detachment looks like it's going to be pretty awesome and a Ghost Scale should be really good in that. And then we got the Hammerhead Gunship at 155. Crute Carnivores, 10 or 20 models, 85 and 170. The Far Stalkers, 105. Crute Hounds are 40 and 80 for 5 and 10 models. And then we've got the Lone Spear for 110. And then we've got our three different Shapers, 65 for the Flush, 55 for the Trail, and 60 for the War. And then the Crutox Rampagers, definitely looking forward to seeing the stats and everything on those. But three of those is 130 or six is 260. So they're not cheap for like three and six models, but I presume they're going to be pretty tough. And then also adding like some much needed melee to the tower range, uh, definitely going to be interesting. So looking forward to seeing those. And then we have the Crutox Riders, 40, 80, 120. Pathfinders, 10 for 120. Piranhas, one, two, or three at 55 a piece. And then we've got the Razor Shark Strike Fighter, 170. The Riptide Battlesuit is back to 245. So that's actually a good thing. I know people immediately see that and go, oh man, the Riptide went up a ton. But the Riptide should be like 245. It should just have like stats and abilities to reflect that. So hopefully they fix Riptides. I would absolutely love to see the Triptide come back. I'd love to see a all suit like detachment actually be like good and viable with like lots of Riptides, Ghost Kills and Crisis led by Farsight and maybe even like some Stealth Suits and Shadow Sun. I'm uh, really looking forward to like the diversity of the range and everything like that. And it looks like with the crew prices that actually like the points costs are high enough that maybe you're going to be able to build like a viable all crew army. I know some people were like excited to do that. Not really my cup of tea, but then we had the Sky Ray Gunship 175. Stealth Battle Suits are 75 and 150 for three and six. Storm Surge at 425. And then we got Strike Team for 100. Sun Shark Bomber for 160. And then we still have all three of the Tidewall pieces. So I wasn't sure what was going to happen with those. Uh, but we had the Tidewall Drone Port, 85. The Gun Rig for 90. And the Shield Line for 85. And I'm not sure. I'd have to double check. But I'm pretty sure it's been a while since like some of those have even been available in Games Workshop Store. So maybe those are going to come back. Seems interesting that they would put them in the actual codex if you're not going to be able to buy them. So realistically, I think like the Gun Rig has been out of the store for a while now so i'm expecting that to come back into the range and then finally we have the vespid stingwings for 70. now a quick message from today's sponsor cmo games has been selling games workshop products online for over 20 years they carry the full line of games workshop products including warhammer 40,000, age of sigmar necromunda blood bowl paint tools and more almost all games workshop products are priced at 15 percent off msrp cmo games takes pre-orders for most games workshop products released at their earliest date possible 12:01 a.m on saturday they go live most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15 percent off msrp CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now back to the video. So we don't know 100% if this is real. Looks real to me. All of the units you would expect except for those characters. The Owns and then Long Strike are on here. On the way like all the codexes have been printed so far... The enhancements have been on a different page. So it makes sense to me. It looks legit. Some of the prices look like they've gone up a decent amount, but I'm assuming that reflects like them actually being good in game terms now. But again, there's like already a lot of like negativity surfacing and people are like, oh, Tau Army for sale, blah, blah, blah. Let's wait until we see like the actual rules and everything. If there's one thing we know about Warhammer fans and like 40K players in general, it's that every time anything changes, it immediately sucks until it like wins every tournament and it's broken. So I think this looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty exciting. I haven't like went through and started building lists or anything like that, but it definitely seems viable to be able to take like everything you want to take. I'm really looking forward to like an all suit army. I would expect to see like some all crew army lists as well. And then some of like your more traditional lists. 
So really cool, really exciting. Definitely looking forward to the Codex. This has got me hyped. I can't wait for, I presume tomorrow, because usually when they go up for pre-orders, we'll see like all of the Codex reviews drop from all of uh, Games Workshop's second wave employees, aka like the influencers. So really excited to see that. Definitely want to look through the Codex and everything, see all the actual rules. Looking forward to the Tau Army rule and then seeing the detachments. And then now we know like basically every data sheet in the entire Tau army is going to have an added on like special ability, similar to what we've seen for all the other factions. So with the crisis battle suits getting broken up and then all of these new shapers, I just cannot wait to see what we got going on. So let me know what you're excited about, what you think of this initial impression. Why are three of the special characters missing from this list? Always like to hear back from you guys in the comments. And realistically, we're probably going to find out all these details tomorrow, but figured I'd come to you with this in the meantime. As I know, I personally am excited. And of course, the internet is already like absolutely infuriated and just talking about how bad Tau are. And of course, they'll be wrong like they always are. So that being said, special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description to save 15% on Games Workshop products. Remember, pre-orders go live tonight at midnight for the new Croot Box. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man. And I think this looks awesome. And I'm out of here.